Heat in the summer, especially here in Manitoba, is usually welcomed with open arms. Considering the long cold winters we can experience, and sometimes, well, summer may be a little shorter than we want. But we still work outdoors, do outdoor activities. When we do this, we put ourselves at risk. Playing sports, riding bicycles, even going for a walk can expose people to dangerous levels of heat stress on the body. What about those that work in this heat? Building construction, road construction workers, they're exposed to heat stress daily during the spring and summer. Especially wearing all this PPE and doing all that physical strenuous work, all of this puts your body into dangerous situations. Today we will discuss some of the signs and symptoms to be aware of and how to control them to reduce the chances of getting ill or being hospitalized. Some of the terms that commonly get misused are heat stress, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. We will discuss what these are and how to identify these differences. Now don't forget that 70% of the human body is made up of water. We need to protect that water level as best we can while doing outdoor activities. So come with me, let's try to keep ourselves nice and cool. Doing physical activities in the summer can be fun and a great way to keep fit. But doing all this running around will cause you to sweat. Sweat is the body's natural way of cooling itself and is a combination of water and salt. The most common areas for the body to utilize this cooling system are through your palms, the soles of your feet, your forehead, and your armpits. Your chest and back have large areas of pores that can secrete sweat as well. The more active we are, the more we sweat. When this happens, we need to refill our body's water level. Drinking alcohol can speed up your heart and dilate your blood vessels, which is kind of doing the same thing as all these physical activities do. So doing both activities and drinking alcohol combines your body's efforts in trying to cool itself. Drinking plenty of water and sport drinks during activities will help your body recover quicker and keep you properly hydrated. Working in this heat can sometimes be a bit more dangerous. When we work in construction, we need to wear our PPE, hard hat, safety footwear, sometimes even a high vis. Some trades such as welders have to wear long leather sleeves or jackets. Other trades like mechanics have to wear full length coveralls. All of this PPE and clothing can trap heat to make us sweat even more. But we still need to wear it as per the Manitoba regulation part six. Now, believe it or not, your t-shirt and pants are probably considered PPE as well. How might you ask? Well, let's look at it this way. In the regulation part 6.8, there's a clear statement for skin protection. It states PPE appropriate for the risk. If there is a risk to the worker's skin from radiant heat or sharp jagged objects, which may puncture or abrade the skin. So in simple terms, this means that while on a construction site, workers should not wear shorts as this exposes their legs to those cuts and abrasions. Workers should wear short sleeve shirts as this protects their skin from the UV rays. This does not include tank tops or cut off sleeve shirts. Your sleeve should be approximately four inches from the shoulder seam coming down. We are working in the summer, which means we are exposed to intense UV rays. As well, there is a potential for nail or other sharp objects to cut our skin. If you wear pants, there's a greater chance that the pants will be cut or ripped and not so much the worker's skin. Or at least if the skin is broken, it might not be as severe of an injury. A hard hat, when worn properly, does allow your head to breathe. Don't wear a ball cap. The head straps on the hard hat elevate to keep the bucket enough off of your head and allow some airflow. Some hard hats even have air vents that are manufactured into the structure. Besides, ball caps are not CSA approved. All that said, ball caps should not be worn under the hard hat either. This alters the fit of the hard hat and does not protect your head as intended within the manufacturer or CSA guidelines and standards. Refilling your personal 
fuel tank is very important. And sometimes there is more than just water that we have to consider. Sport drinks will have electrolytes that the body does need. It is important and recommended to limit the amount of sport drinks that you consume daily as they have a high sugar content. As hard as it may be, workers should avoid caffeine throughout the day. Now, a morning coffee on the way into work? Sure, no problem. A can of soda with lunch? All right, I can live with that too. But the rest of the day, well, we need to be aware of what we are consuming. If you spend a good part of your day outdoors braving the sweltering heat, then there's a good chance you may experience a number of issues, including sluggishness, headaches, nausea, even poor digestion. These may be brought on by loss of fluids from your body excessively sweating. There are certain foods that may be responsible for leaving your body dehydrated. So caffeine and caffeinated drinks are often blamed for dehydration. It is recommended to drink two to four cups of water for every hour that you are doing outdoor activities. Gauge your activity level and the temperature to pick either the high end or the low end of this water consumption. Although it's never a bad idea to err on the side of caution and go a little bit higher. But there are also options instead of consuming all of this fluid. There are also foods that have a high water content. Those include watermelon, strawberries, grapefruit, peaches, cantaloupe, and grapes. Eating vegetables on your break or lunch will assist in proper body balance for you as well. As we can see in this chart across the top, the relative humidity percentage has a great effect on the air temperature. It is recommended to pay attention to this percentage because, well, as you can see, the feels like temperature is so much higher. Let's take a closer look. At 25 degrees Celsius with, let's pick a 70% humidity, it will feel like 32 degrees. Let's up that to, well, 100% humidity. Now it's going to feel like 37 degrees. With the reference chart on the bottom, you can see that we are being warned to watch for symptoms of heat stress and requiring us to drink extra water. But we know that some of the daily average temperatures in Manitoba can reach into the high 20s or even mid 30s before the humid X factor. So it's all relative and very important that we keep an eye on this chart and look out for the symptoms of heat stress. I would recommend to try and find a copy of this chart and post it for reference so workers can keep themselves safe during the summer months. When the temperature reaches 35 degrees Celsius at 100% humidity, the body struggles to cool itself by not being able to evaporate sweat. When the air temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius, outdoor activities should be limited or even eliminated. People should try to stay indoors, and trust me, you want to enjoy that air conditioning. At this temperature, your internal organs can also start to shut down. As we mentioned earlier, let's define what the heat-related stresses are, some of the symptoms to be aware of, and how to treat someone experiencing these symptoms. With heat illness or heat stress, workers will experience headache, dizziness, upset stomach, and sometimes vomiting. The treatment measures, well, we want to get these workers with this heat stress to stop their activity, get them to sit or lay down in a nice cool place, drink more liquids, preferably water, and then seek immediate care at the ne nearest medical facility, as we don't know how this will progress or even accentuate into something more serious. With heat exhaustion, workers will feel tired or weak, have moist skin, have a fast but weak pulse, may experience nausea or muscle cramps. To treat a worker who has heat exhaustion, we want to do the following. Take the worker immediately to a clinic or emergency room for that medical evaluation. Call 911 if that medical care is unavailable. Have someone stay with the worker until help arrives to help monitor them. Remove the worker from the hot area, give them lots of liquids, again preferably water, to drink. 
Remove any unnecessary clothing, including shoes and socks. Cool the worker with cold compresses or have the worker wash their face, hands and neck with cold water or rags. Encourage frequent sips of cool water, don't chug the bottle. With heat stroke, workers will have hot, dry skin. Their pulse will be rapid and strong. They may experience confusion or unconsciousness, have a high body temperature over 38 degrees Celsius, and will likely be very thirsty. Take the following steps to treat a worker with heat stroke. Immediately call 911 for emergency medical care. Stay with that worker until the medical services arrive. Move the worker to a shaded, cool area and remove any outer clothing. Cool the worker quickly using the following methods. With a cold water or an ice bath if possible, wet the skin. Place cold, wet cloths on the skin. Soak the clothing with cool water. We also want to circulate the air around the worker to speed cooling. Place cold, wet clothes on ice on the head, neck, armpits and groin or soak the clothing with cool water. Heat stroke is the most severe of the heat stress illnesses. It occurs when the body can no longer control its temperature and the body's temperature rises rapidly. The sweating mechanism fails and the body is unable to cool itself down. When heat stroke occurs, your temperature can rise to 38 degrees Celsius or higher within 10 to 15 minutes. Heat stroke can cause permanent disability or death if the person does not receive emergency treatment immediately. Here's a few key things to remember. Be aware of not only your symptoms, but also those of your crew or other co-workers on site around you. Number two, protect yourself by wearing the appropriate clothing. When the body sweats, cotton shirts will only absorb that sweat. It's best to use an athletic dry fit shirt or other athletic shirt that will wick the moisture away from your body. Number three, take regular and frequent micro breaks to rehydrate and find some cool shaded area. A micro break may only be approximately five minutes to let your body recuperate from the exertion, but you get out of that heat. All in all, it boils down to this guys, identify the symptoms of heat stress. If you or one of your coworkers isn't behaving like normal during a hot day, be aware of this and take the appropriate action. Get some liquids. Communicate at the beginning of the day during your hazard assessment that the temperatures will be extreme and in some cases can climb quickly. It can reach the high 20s before 10 a.m. some days. Finally, control the heat stress as best as possible with micro breaks. Drink lots of liquid and find some shade. Remember, two to four cups of water for each hour you are in the heat. If possible, try to start working earlier as the sun is up and there is lots of light. That way you can end your eight hour workday a bit earlier before the heat gets really intense around two to 4 p.m. All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to download the free CSAM app on your cell phone or tablet. More references on other topics are available and be sure to check out CSAM's virtual toolbox talk on cold stress for later this winter when, well, we're in the exact opposite of what we're experiencing now. So until next time, stay cool, Stay hydrated, stay safe out there.